On the 16th of February 2023, a sudden stratospheric warming happened above the North Pole. At the time, we said that there could be impacts from that sudden stratospheric warming on the UK's weather, but there'd be a lag of around two weeks or so. Two weeks are almost up, and we are indeed starting to see the signs of some impacts on the UK's weather. This weekend and early next week, I'll be talking about what all of that means in the next 20 minutes or so. I'm Met Office meteorologist Ada McGiven. Welcome to the Met Office deep dive, a regular format we now do on a Tuesday. If you enjoy these in-depth discussions of the UK's weather, please do hit the subscribe button. It will help us to justify doing more of this sort of thing on the Met Office YouTube channel. Before we get into how the weather is shaping up over the next week or so, let's take a look back because, of course, it's the final day today of meteorological winter. Lots of people have different definitions of winter, but the meteorological winter goes from 1st of December to the 28th of February, so it's the last day today. And what a winter it's been. Now, if you take a look at this map, it shows that temperatures across the UK have been roughly around average this winter. During the past three months, when you average it all out across the UK, this white colour here indicates a temperature anomaly close to zero. So very little of note there for the average temperature across the UK, some warmer bits, not many colder bits. However, that masks what has been a very up and down season, actually. If you look at the uh, average temperature across the UK day to day, and this is what you'd normally expect, the line going through the middle here, and then you've got the actual temperature averaged across the UK each day from the 1st of December to the end of February. And you can see we've had these cold spells, a really notable cold spell, the most notable for some years in December, around the middle of December that reached its nadir, and then it warmed up for Christmas, of course, Christmas into the new year. First half of January, we had some very mild and some very wet weather, and then later in January, another cold spell. And since then, actually, it's more often been mild than cold. And February itself has been particularly mild, especially across Scotland. It's also been, in February, notably dry, especially for England and Wales. Here's the rainfall amount, and this covers the whole of the month except for the final day today. And it shows a large part of England and Wales covered by these dark browns. That would indicate 20% or less of the average February rainfall. Now, it's only really northwest Scotland where we've been closer to average, one or two spots where it's been above average. So a remarkably dry February, a mild February as well, helping to balance out that cold spell that we had in the first half of December. And overall, temperatures this season have been closer to average. And of course, the season as a whole, because of the dry February, has been a little drier than average. So. Uh, quite an interesting winter that we've just had, but <laughs> there's no end in sight just yet for the wintry weather. Let's take a look at what's going on with the bigger picture and the satellite image for the last few days. And what you can see here, yes, a fair amount of cloud feeding into the UK. You can see it coming on Sunday there into Monday. You can see it feeding in from the North Sea. But just stepping back a bit and looking at the broader pattern, and you can see this big loop over the UK in the cloud, uh, these systems over in the Atlantic, generating a lot of cloud, these areas of low pressure, but really they're not making progress because this big loop here stops them from moving in. And what we have got over the UK at the moment is a large, large area of high pressure. There it is in all its glory. It's sitting to the northwest of Scotland and it's basically going to remain stationary for the next few days. So just fast forwarding it here into Wednesday, that high pressure just milling about to the north of Scotland. There's the jet stream taking a long diversion over the UK. A bit of a pulse in the jet stream there coming in from the east, but this is not a proper Siberian or Scandinavian easterly. Most of it's recirculated air around the area of high pressure. So although it's feeling a bit chilly on the North Sea coast because of that easterly airflow, it's nothing particularly cold. Temperatures are close to average at the moment. I'm just gonna skip through these charts because I've essentially you're seeing the same thing day after day into Friday, that high pressure still to the north and northwest of the UK, the jet stream still taking the long route around the UK. And what we're essentially seeing over the next couple of days, we'll just skip to the UK charts. In fact, I'll show you the radar imagery for today because proof that uh, the 
presence of high pressure doesn't always lead to dry and sunny weather. We are seeing a lot of showers feeding in from the east and this is, this is Monday into Monday evening. You can see the showers just continuing to pepper parts of northeast England in particular, the Pennines, into the Midlands. And then you can see this uh, westward progression of the showers as, as Tuesday started into Wales. And then this plume of showery activity or longer spells of rain really, some heavy bursts there for uh, the far southeast into Kent. But the showers are basically feeding in from the North Sea. And that's what we're going to continue to see over the next few days. Subtle differences day to day, but essentially the general theme continues. This is uh, Tuesday afternoon, so uh, if we play that forward, you can see a lot of cloud across the UK, showers feeding into the east and into central parts, and this plume of more prolonged rain affecting Kent. Now, overnight, there's this trend for that area of showers across Kent to push into central southern England, and I think that during the early hours, really, we'll see some showers appearing into Wales and the southwest. These are all quite light showers, but nevertheless, it's not going to uh, be very pleasant where you see shower after shower, especially if you're on the Pennines and the east coast of England, southeast Scotland, for example. Now, increasingly, over the next 24 hours or so, we're going to see these clear spells across western Scotland. That's where the uh, lowest temperatures will be overnight, uh, frost in places and southern parts of England after the showers move through overnight, brighter skies for uh, Wednesday. But just skipping forward a few days and you can see into Thursday, Thursday morning, some sunshine there in the south and across parts of Wales, some breaks for Northern Ireland, Northwest England and Western Scotland. But we've continually got this feed of cloud and showers into the east and likewise into Friday, same again. We've got the, the winds coming in from the east and the northeast. Some breaks in the cloud will develop, some sunshine, especially for parts of Scotland and Northern England by this stage, I think it will start to become less cloudy, less showery along that North Sea coast as we go into Friday and Saturday, but still a lot of cloud floating across the UK because this air is coming from the Atlantic and it's circulating around this area of high pressure. Now I mentioned temperatures are around average at the moment, however, the wind chill temperatures are going to be a little lower. So this is how it looks. This is how it looks for Tuesday afternoon. And you can see these are the actual temperatures on Tuesday afternoon. And these are the wind chill values. Just pause it there. So that's today. Wind chill values three to four Celsius fairly widely, particularly on that east coast. Similar for uh, Wednesday, similar for Thursday, Friday. And uh, we're going to see those frosts overnight as well, where we get clear spells, especially for southern and western parts of the UK, and most especially for parts of western Scotland. So that summarises the weather over the next few days. A very static weather pattern, really. Very little of notes taking place. Not much happens. And then into the weekend, a lot happens, certainly by the start of next week, because there's a big change underway. And I mentioned the sudden stratospheric warming at the start. Let's explain a little bit about what that means and what we expect to happen as a result. So we were flagging before the 16th of February that this sudden stratospheric warming was likely to take place. And what we did indeed see around the middle of February, the 16th uh, to be specific, was this very quick warming over just a few days uh, of around 40 degrees Celsius at 30 kilometers above the North Pole. So that's in the stratosphere. Now, why does that matter? It matters because that also occurs in conjunction with a change in wind direction surrounding what we call the stratospheric polar vortex. So during the winter, we get this very cold pool of air above the North Pole in the stratosphere called the stratospheric polar vortex. You get this westerly airflow surrounding it about 60 degrees north or so in the stratosphere. And of course, that is flowing in the same direction roughly as the jet stream down below, so it can help to give it a bit of a tailwind. Now, when we have this sudden stratospheric warming, then it can occur in conjunction with a reversal of that wind direction or that general flow around the North Pole in the stratosphere. So at the same time as this warming took place, we saw this reversal in direction of the airflow surrounding the North Pole in the stratosphere. Now, what happens in the stratosphere takes time to filter down through the layers of the atmosphere and have an effect on the jet stream and our own weather at the surface. And what we often see, but not always, 
what we often see is that when this sudden stratospheric warming happens and this wind reversal, the jet stream, well, it can put the brakes on the jet stream. It can help to slow it down. It can help to weaken the jet stream. And of course, that can lead to the formation of large areas of high pressure. Now, at the moment, we've got a large area of high pressure and the jet stream not particularly influencing the UK's weather. But this isn't the result of the sudden stratospheric warming. What we're likely to see over the next few days through Friday, Saturday and Sunday are the impacts of that sudden stratospheric warming in the stratosphere start to slightly change the shape of this broad scale pattern, this bigger picture that's across the UK. Now, if we just look at the present time, we've got high pressure to the north of the UK on Tuesday night into Wednesday. But by the time we get to later Friday and into the start of the weekend, that high pressure is starting to drift further north. And what we're seeing actually is low pressure over the Atlantic, this vigorous area of low pressure, it's pushing its energy into the jet stream that's pushing towards Greenland. And that's helping to amplify the jet stream. What do I mean by that? It's helping to make the jet stream more loopy. So it's exaggerating these twists and turns. And what we're seeing is, is a very, very perturbed jet stream by the start of Saturday. Let's pause it there. The perturbed jet stream allows the high pressure over the north of the UK to drift towards Iceland and Greenland. So you can see it's centered there rather than over northwest Scotland. And this twists and turns of the jet stream, that, that helps to bring a northerly airflow in to the north of the UK. So as a result, of the sudden stratospheric warming that took place almost two weeks ago. The jet stream is becoming even more amplified later this week into the start of, next, uh, start of the weekend. And that's allowing colder northerly winds to start to arrive into the north of the UK at the start of the weekend. So this lag effect of two weeks is taking place. The high pressure that we're seeing over the UK this week isn't the sudden stratospheric warming, but the pattern becomes even more loopy. And <clears throat> this is why we say when a sudden stratospheric warming increases the chance of cold weather in the UK, it's because it slows down the jet stream, the jet stream becomes more loopy, and we are then at more risk of northerlies or easterlies. Now, when back in 2018, we had the very cold weather following a sudden stratospheric warming, that was an easterly wind that came around an area of high pressure over Scandinavia. This is a different pattern. Again, it's the result of a sudden stress for warming, but this time the high pressure is in a different place. It's between Iceland and Greenland, and that's allowing colder northerlies to arrive. Now, initially on Saturday, most of the UK won't see this. We'll still have the same old pattern that we've got all week. Areas of cloud, temperatures close to average, a few showers here and there. But for northern Scotland, let's... Uh, Fast forward to uh, weather graphic for Saturday. This probably won't show it much, but we're starting to see the effects of these northerlies. And on Saturday, we're likely to see some snow showers arrive into Shetland and later on, perhaps Orkney. So you can see those northerlies. Now, it's also at this point on Saturday, that we're going to see some more prolonged precipitation, showery precipitation into the north of Scotland. You can see the blues there. Most of this on Saturday into Saturday night into the start of Sunday, it's going to be rain. Snow showers for Shetland, rain for other parts of northern Scotland. Above about three or 400 metres later Sunday, it's more likely to start to turn to sleet and snow. And this area here, this is a, a, a little frontal system that comes in later Sunday, and that's the feature that's likely to bring a mixture of rain, sleet and hill snow to northern parts of Scotland. But there's some uncertainty about this. Different computer models have it in a slightly different position. Some have it further north, and as a result, it's more rain. And some have it a bit further south, and as a result, it's a bit more uh, sleet and snow. So there's some uncertainty about its location and its composition. And just to highlight that, I've picked a uh, part of the highlands. Here's Fort William. This is something I don't think we've shown before. It's uh, a probability of precipitation. The probabilities are on the uh, y-axis here, going up to 100%. So if you imagine each of these bars for a uh, three-hour period or, or whatever on, this is Saturday, this is Sunday, this is Monday, 
each of these bars represents uh, the probability of precipitation. So this one that goes up here, that's a 25% probability of precipitation early Sunday. And this one here, later Monday, is a 30% chance of precipitation. Precipitation could be anything, rain, sleet, snow, hail. And these colors show what that precipitation is likely to be. And you can see the different colors extending up across the different probabilities. And so what this effectively shows, it's difficult for someone like me to read it with my color blindness, but I could just about make out that on Saturday and Sunday, most of these bars are green E, but there are some blues there. So that indicates that it's most likely that if there's precipitation, it will be rain, perhaps sleet in Fort William on Saturday and Sunday. But there is a hint there of some blues. So there's that uh, chance that some computer models are picking up some snow with this precipitation. Then by Monday, it's basically all blues. And so it indicates that the, the colder air is digging in. The northerlies are arriving by Monday. And so any precipitation is likely to be composed of sleet and snow by that stage. So some uncertainty, basically, this is what this is showing, some uncertainty on Sunday about the uh, content of the precipitation in the north of Scotland, rain, sleet, snow. Most likely, it's going to be rain, sleet, and hill snow at first. And then increasingly, later Sunday into Monday, cold air digs in, cold air arrives from the north and turns that to snow. Now, from Sunday into Monday and Tuesday, there are some uncertainties about how far south that cold air pushes. And it's all to do with the position and the strength of the high pressure around Greenland, Iceland area. Let's take a look at this. And this summarizes the temperature pattern from 50 different computer models, well, 51 technically, from the uh, 50 run, 51 runs of the European model for midday Tuesday. So this shows blues are cold weather, greens are mild air. And don't expect you to look at each one of these in detail, but basically we look at a snapshot at midday Tuesday and what the temperature looks like across the UK. Most of these show cold air flooding south on Tuesday. So uh, member 10, for example, uh, member 14, member 15, member 17. Those that don't show the cold air covering the whole of the UK have milder air towards the southwest. Some of them have quite a lot of mild air across the UK, but they're in the minority. Some of them have mild air close to the southwest. So what looks most likely, but not guaranteed, is that cold air will push across the whole of the UK early next week. That air coming from the Arctic, it's coming from the north, cold enough for snow. And it comes behind the weather front, the front that I just mentioned for northern Scotland, and that's likely to track southwards across the UK to bring a spell of rain, sleet, hill, snow, and then on the back edge of that as cold air pushes in some snow in some places. But as that cold front clears, it's most likely to clear all the way south to bring cold air uh, throughout the UK. And I'll just show you that how that looks like from a little drawing I did earlier. And this is representative of, say, Monday, Tuesday, early next week. And this, 60% there, this is the most likely outcome, looking at all the different computer model output and the different positions of high pressure and low pressure. This is the most likely outcome, considered at the moment. It could change slightly tomorrow when we get more information, more computer model runs coming in and so on. But this, at the moment, is looking like the most likely situation for the start of next week, Monday, Tuesday. What we've got is that northerly, that cold northerly spreading across the whole of the UK. That would bring snow showers to northern and eastern parts of the UK in particular, but perhaps you know, some little features forming in that cold airflow to bring some more persistent snow in places. So cold, much colder than average, certainly a very cold feel with that northerly wind and all areas in the cold weather. Not everyone would see snow in this situation because in a northerly, some southwestern parts, some southern and southwestern parts would be well sheltered. It'd just be sunny skies, that kind of beautiful, crisp winter sunshine, but cold feel that we often get in a northerly. Now, at the same time as high pressure migrating towards this part of the world, uh, in between Iceland and Greenland, it's likely to push the jet stream further south. So we've got a weaker and more south-shifted jet stream and that's likely to push low pressure 
to the south of the UK. So this just represents low pressure arriving and perhaps pushing into the continent, but staying away from the UK. This is early next week, and that's the most likely situation for now. But there are alternative scenarios. One alternative scenario is for that area of high pressure to not quite go as far as Greenland and to stay relatively close to the UK. Now that would lead to the cold air, put the cold arrows on, just to the east of the UK, perhaps still affecting parts of the north and the east of the UK, but with uh, milder air coming in, say, like that, and not quite reaching the UK either. So mostly, mostly it's dry. It's still colder than average, but mostly it's dry and settled, a bit similar to this week, really. That's considered a 20% probability. And then there's another probability of 20%, another scenario, third one, where the high pressure goes even further that way, northwestwards. And what we see is we still see that northerly across many parts of the UK like that, but we also see uh, low pressure sneak in from the southwest, like that. Now that would bring some rain and some milder air, so say for Devon, Cornwall, milder conditions, outbreaks of rain, but somewhere in the middle you'd have that meeting of the cold air with the wet weather and you'd have this uh, zone of disruptive snowfall. At the start of next week, this is considered a 20% probability. But through next week, this scenario becomes increasingly likely because you've got this south shifted jet stream coming down here. You've got these areas of low pressure forming along it. They're going to try and get in. They're going to try and, and also this high pressure could well drift off further northwest. So although this is considered a 20% probability at the start of next week, it's considered an increased probability for later next week. So as the week goes on, increasingly likely to have the Atlantic try to return, try to push milder air in, try to put rain, push rain in, but, but on the leading edge of any rain, the risk of disruptive snow. And the reason that's considered increasingly likely later next week is because when you look at the temperature trends, and here we've got Aviemore on the top and Plymouth on the bottom, what they tend to show, the red boxes here are the forecast temperatures by day, and the blue boxes are the forecast temperatures by night, and likewise you've got red lines and blue lines that show the averages day and night. What these tend to show, both for Aviemore and for Plymouth, is this downward trend in temperature, close to average actually over the next few days for Aviemore, and then dipping below average, and they both reach uh, Nadir uh, bottom, they bottom out about Tuesday, Wednesday. So that's likely at the moment to be the coldest period of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then there's this general rise initially for Plymouth, because that's where the milder weather is likely to arrive from. You can see the red and the blue boxes though for Aviemore as well start to rise, although they stay below average for Aviemore throughout next week. So and also the boxes get much bigger, that indicates creates a greater range of likely temperatures, more uncertainty for later next week. And that uncertainty begins around Tuesday for both. But given that the rise starts in Plymouth a bit earlier, and then those Plymouth boxes, many of them are above, or mostly above the average line, that would indicate that there's that increased probability that mild rare will try and push in from the southwest. And of course, as that moves in, it's got some rain, it's got some wind, there'll be some snow, potentially disruptive, on the leading edge. So we can't say for definite, we can never say for definite what uh, the weather will be like a week or so to go, but we can give those trends, we can give those scenarios, we can give the most likely weather patterns, and that's what it looks like. Turning colder from the north through the weekend, and into the start of next week, most likely this cold northerly airflow across the UK, but increasingly, we're likely to see the Atlantic try to push low pressure systems in on a southward shifted jet stream. And of course, on the leading edge of those systems, there's always the potential for some disruptive snow, impossible to put detail on exactly where and when that disruptive snow would happen. Because of course, it all comes down to very fine margins in terms of 
exactly where that high is going to sit, whether it's there or there or there, exactly how far the jet stream is shifted south, exactly how those areas of low pressure start to form and interact with the general pattern. So there's a lot to play for, but that general trend is fairly clear. Turning colder because of the high pressure migrating towards Greenland as a result of the sudden stratospheric warming that happened a couple of weeks ago. Northerly winds at first, and then turning more unsettled from the southwest with the potential for something disruptive to keep an eye out for. And of course, as things become clearer over the next few days, we'll keep you updated right here. We'll have the Metal Vis 10-day trend tomorrow. That will be presented by Alex Deacon, so make sure you tune in for that. But so this is all I've got for you now. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And uh, keep following us on YouTube if you are already subscribed. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.